Well, hello, my bookish friends. Today, Winnie and I are here to share my March wrap up. You're getting like two wrap ups in a row because I was very late with my February one. Apologies about that. Just life got busy and I just never uploaded it. Anyway, I am going to be going in order of least likely to recommend to most likely to recommend. I did it in that order last time and I really liked it. I think some of you guys mentioned you liked it as well. So that is the plan. And we were starting with a sadly a DNF. So absolutely not likely to recommend because I didn't even finish it myself. So the book that I didn't finish is The Women. Everyone and their mother knows about this book because it's her latest and mostly people are loving it. And I totally understand that she has a huge fan base and rightly so for them. It's great, but I have really struggled. Sometimes I like one of her books and sometimes I struggle with her books. And this book is about um, the Vietnam War. We're following a quite young woman um, who wants to go to the war as a nurse after her brother goes to war. Um, she wants to follow him there essentially. And she goes and it's essentially about everything she experiences there. And I think what I struggle mostly with Kristen Hanna's books are that we always seem to meet characters who are very inexperienced and experiencing something the first time. And I, I feel like it's a bit, a bit easy to write a book about an inexperienced person because you really get to lean on plot. And when you lean so much on plot, um, the character, when they haven't had a lot of experience, everything is shocking to them. They can't handle anything. Um, and there's not a lot of depth in reaction to plot when someone is experiencing things for the first time. Depending, of course, but I feel like in, in Hannah's case, she tends to write very flat characters. So we're just following someone who doesn't really know what they're doing as a nurse in this really intense situation. And then I know over the course of time, she becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and like gets to know herself. And it just seems so easy to write that type of character and something that I've read time and time again, and something that I just don't really want in my reading anymore. I'm really expecting much more fleshed out characters. I'm expecting them to have opinions about things more so. And I don't know, just to have a lot more depth, a lot more history in their character. That's what I look for. I'm looking for plot and character. So this did not do that for me. I did pass this along to my mom who really does like Kristen Hanna. I will continue to read Kristen Hanna because sometimes I do like them. All right, next up was a shocker to me. Honestly, I was so surprised that I didn't really like No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. She wrote What Lies in the Woods and I really liked that book. So this was a surprise in a bad way for me. Uh, this is a thriller book about a woman who finds herself in a pretty rough situation. She and her, I think, husband, um, they are pregnant and he's just lost her job, his job, I should say, and they're in a pickle because they can't afford to live where they're living. So they have to move and they decide to move back to her main home. Um, so Emma, her hometown doesn't really want her there. And it is because her parents died, um, were murdered one night um, in their childhood home. And the police and many people believe that Emma had something to do with it. Um, she proclaims that she did not have anything to do with it. But she and her sisters that night were all there on that fateful night. And they have all promised each other that no one can know. And so I knew that they were going to head back to this home and head back and have all sorts of, you know, memories start flooding in because she's not even fully sure what happened that night. And I'm, I'm there for that. That's very formulaic and something I've read before, but usually there's a lot of 
substance there and I was uh, really disappointed that there wasn't more substance. You're seeing her connect with her sisters again for the first time in years and what I found really frustrating was it just the question of what happened that night it keeps coming up over and over again and also I want to protect you like they all seem to want to protect each other but they're essentially saying that their parents were really horrible parents and by all means everything written in this book suggests that their parents were terrible and their parents really you know maybe didn't deserve to die in that way but uh we're far from the picture perfect parents that kids deserve but there was not a lot of depth about how their parents acted i was expecting a lot of like childhood flashbacks to like when they're four and six and whatever um and and experiencing these horrible experiences with their parents but it there wasn't a lot of that there was barely anything and so I, the whole time I was reading, I'm like, this just doesn't seem very exciting or there's barely any thought through this mystery. And I was just really disappointed. So yeah, sadly, I can't recommend that book to you guys. Uh, the next book I want to chat with you about is This Thing Between Us. This is a horror book that I read on Kobo and it is essentially about... Um, it's kind of like A, A-L-E-X-A, -E I cannot say her out loud or she will start talking, um, where this couple gets this thing in their house and it starts doing very creepy things. It starts going off at random times. Um, it starts talking to them. It starts sending, like singing songs that are very creepy um and it, it is about that experience but it also is about grief because very very soon into reading you discover that our main character loses his wife his wife passes away and he is left with grief and this thing and I really thought it was going to be mostly about technology, but it really turned more to grief. And I would have been there for that, but I honestly felt very confused a lot of the way through this book. It was good. And I will say it was very creepy, but I didn't know what was happening a lot of the time. Suddenly people are coming back to life. I just felt more confused than anything while reading this book and including the ending. So uh I'd recommend it but just go in knowing you might not know what in the world is going on. Goddess of Filth is next and this starts off with a bang. You are meeting these teen girls getting together to do a bit of a seance. Um, I think they're using like a Ouija board for it. One of them has a very visceral response. She starts getting her period like flowing, flowing in the midst of this uh, Ouija board session. And she's never the same after they've had their, their gathering. And this follows one of her friends trying to help her desperately. Now, what I really liked about this book was it explored um, sexuality as well as conservatism. And they're very much in a um, a culture and the people around them are very, very conservative. And we have these girls who want to explore their sexuality and understandably so. And so you have this one girl who gets to explore that because she might be possessed. So you're exploring um, that demand that a lot of society has on girls to be pure, to be virgins, all of that. And this pushback from this girl group. And um, I really loved the friendship uh, in this little group. I really, really enjoyed that. So I, I definitely enjoyed, definitely would recommend. I listened to it on audio and it was really good. Next is two books from the Maisie Dobb series. I read number 12 and 13. So there's Journey to Munich as well as uh, in this grave hour. We're coming just off of 
Maisie having a, an absolutely terrible time and something that I wish she had never gone through was so upset in the last little bit of these books but we're seeing her starting to come into her own again and wanting to get back into detective work again and um, we are moving into World War II in this um, part of the series and she is making some pretty terrifying trips um, as there's a rise in power from Hitler and, and, you know, the whole world is in danger, essentially. But I will say one thing that was lovely about the last book, and I guess it was number 13, was just the optimism that you could feel for Maisie's life and you just feel like she's going to turn a corner. I just love the series. I would so highly recommend the whole series. My aim is to finish the whole thing by December and I know that I can do it. I'm just, I just want to listen to them constantly. Next is a nonfiction book that I read. This is Good Inside and it is about parenting. Yes, this is about gentle parenting, but it does not expect you to not be human. That's one thing that I really liked about this book is that she says like, you're going to yell and things are going to happen and you're going to be human. Um, and instead of being extremely angry with yourself and beating yourself up about these things. She speaks about the importance of repair and the importance of saying I'm sorry to your child. There was a time where parents never said I'm sorry to their children and now we're entering an era where that's more common and I think that's very healthy. So that was a relief to me because I try to do the gentle parenting thing but I also really struggle. So but this book covers all sorts of things from like picky eating to how to deal with their anger and yours and how to connect with your child and so anyway I highlighted the heck out of this book and I will be taking notes <laughs> this is a new thing I've started doing with my nonfiction is taking notes and keeping it in my notion so that I can kind of go to it and be like okay what do I do in this situation that situation the other I think it will be really helpful for me I've already started doing this one thing with Nora and it's a connection thing where you say like um, how filled up with mummy love are you? So I'll just say, where's your mummy love app at? And she'll say, if it's here, then she needs a, like a little cuddle and she'll even go and she'll show me where it's at. And it's very cute. And sometimes she doesn't need any mummy love, but sometimes her mummy love is like at her toes and she needs a lot of cuddles and it's been lovely for me. So anyway, would recommend that book for sure. Any man shocked me. I didn't know what to expect from this book. It's written by an actress, Amber Tamblyn, and I know this actress. I can't really remember where she's from exactly, but I've definitely seen her before, and she is a hell of a writer. And I shouldn't be surprised at that, but I, it, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by this book and also by the impact of this book. I love it when a thriller has layers and also is making a point, especially if it's a feminist point. And this had that in spades. Um, this is a very difficult read. If you like Karen Slaughter, I would say that you could get on board with this. Um, but just all of the trigger warnings because this is about a serial rapist, but it's a female serial rapist. So you are f never meeting her. You are only meeting her victims. And you meet um, each man telling their story and their lived experience of being raped and the aftermath of that. Being raped and then, and then being a man who was raped. And I really thought it was great. Each man was very different from one another. And yet they all went through similar experiences afterwards you know the shock some of them went through extreme shock like you you ex examine that in the very first few pages of the book of a man's absolute terror and shock just after being raped and then you're also with them as they deal with police and the media and how society asks them you know, is it even possible for a man to be raped? And all of these questions that make them feel 
little tiny and what's wonderful about this is that it very much is turning this on its head it's very much saying this is what women go through after rape um and how society makes them feel insignificant um and and how they really have to rely on one another people who have lived experiences of the same things really bond and it shows the bond between these men i thought it was so wonderful and i thought it obviously also showed how god awful rape on a whole is men absolutely can be raped but um i did think that the the point of this was in my opinion to showcase um how horrendous what women go through is um, on a regular basis. I, I just thought it was incredible. I really liked that it honed in on how society deals with these men and also how society like would sometimes, um, I don't know, find her like an empowering person. That was disgusting. Um, I can't recommend it enough. It was wonderful. And next up is a horror book called Boys in the Valley. Oh, this was scary. This book follows a group of boys who live in orphanage. There are priests there that take care of them and offer them schooling and what have you. And you meet, I believe his name was Peter, and he was um, learning from one of the priests how to become a priest himself. And, you know, you're you're following him grappling with the idea of whether or not he wants to do that because he's also met uh, a girl uh, who he's quite interested in and he's like should I do that and so you have this backdrop and this layer of these boys dealing with the um the poverty that they're all living in dealing with some priests being kind and others being not so lovely to them um and then one night there is a banging at the door in the middle of the night the boys, some of them are still asleep and some of them peek out and see. They see a man being brought in by the police and they say something horrific has happened in the woods and we killed all of them because they were all going insane and like hurting and eating off of other people in the woods. We have only kept this man because it's the police chief's um brother he is also insane and thrashing about and there is an ordeal that happens with him and then it ends promptly and then all of a sudden after that experience the boys start acting differently and they start going off on their own and talking to one another and like making plans this felt like lord of the flies in a fantastic way but like mixed with the devil <laughs> if that's possible it was so good the kids are so creepy like it's it's very creepy because you've got the set of kids who are terrifying and then these other kids who are just kids trying to live their lives and trying to survive and you know that they're not all going to make it um, and so it was heartbreaking as well. I loved this book. I will definitely be reading more by this author. And the book I am most likely to recommend to you all is Atomic Habits, Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results. This book has been everywhere. You have probably heard of it. Um, I would not be surprised if you have, but I highlighted the heck out of this book and then I made notes on them. And it is all about habits, how to break habits, how to make habits. And it is so detailed that it makes it very, very clear how to do this. I've actually created little worksheets. When I want to build a habit, I'll go through the process um, and figure out the best way to do it. Um, and also for when I want to break a habit, which I have several I want to break. Ugh, anyway, so um, I, I just find it very helpful. So for example, I've been trying to do little exercise snacks and I was just doing them kind of here, there and everywhere. And now after reading this book, 
I have very set times that I do them and I have prompts to make me do them and it's just it's easier to build better habits after reading this book so I would definitely recommend it I loved it I hope that he writes more because he's like written this one I guess he probably has a lot of pressure James Clear he's written this like I, I, like such an enormous book that everyone goes to that I don't know what you can follow up with with that kind of thing in any case those are all of the books that I read in March um let me know in the comments below what you read and what is the most what is the book that you would recommend the most to me I'd love to know and I will talk to you soon bye guys